Good evening, Lindsay Lane, and welcome to our Thursday night worship. Tonight, we're having another late night lane with our students. My name's Katie White. I'm the girls' ministry director here at the main campus. I'm with Samantha Williams right here. She's our ministry assistant, and we have a great service prepared tonight. Uh, guys, I don't know what you've been doing during your safe at home order, um, excuse me, your stay at home order, but it's about to get changed to safer at home tomorrow. Uh, so I think what that means is you're still going to be at home. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what that means. So I'm not really excited about that, but uh, we'll be back together soon. What we're doing to kill the time is we are enjoying some social media games to kind of keep us sane while we're apart. And so one of the social media games that I've enjoyed is called Calculate Your Next Travel Destination. Because I'm I'm a yeah. traveler. I know. Oh yeah, I I'm love to travel. Samantha's Absolutely. a traveler, yeah. And we're ready to, to, to go some places, especially out of our house. Uh, and so let's go ahead and play this game together. Let's see where you're going next. Does that sound good? Let's see where you're headed off to when this uh, safer at home order is through. All right, so here we go. This is what I need you to do. I need you to choose a number between one and nine. All right, you got your number? A number between one and nine. All right, now multiply that number by three. Sorry, you have to do some math. All right, multiply that number by three. You got that? All right, then I want you to add three to that number. Got it. All right, you added three. Now, take that number and you're gonna multiply by three again. Harder, harder. All right, multiply by three to get three again. All right, so then what you're gonna do is it says add the two digit number you get together. Add the two digit number that you got together. And the number you get is where you're going to be traveling when this is over. So here's our list. Figure out where you're going. Figure out where you're going. Maybe you're going somewhere cool like Spain or Thailand. I don't know, maybe Indonesia or England or Brazil. Ooh, New Zealand. I want to go there. So, Samantha, where are you going? What number did you get? Nine. You got a nine. Yeah, nine, where am I going? Oh, where's she going, guys? Number nine. Oh. Uh, She's staying at home. Woo. She's staying at it's home. not really where I wanted to go. <laughs> She's already been there. She's already been at home. I've been there a lot. Yeah, so hopefully you got a better number than nine, but uh, if I'm doing my math correctly, I bet you didn't. I bet you're staying at home just like the rest of us. So hopefully you enjoyed that game. Again, it was good to pass the time while we're at home. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well. Speaking of games that you can be playing while you stay at home, since apparently we're all going to stay doing. at home some more, <laughs> um, we had a special game this week, and so we wanted to show you our two winners from this week's game. So first of all, our student and their family who got the most questions correct, let's check out their Heads Up video. Uh, Ooh, Bella ate, Bella ate lizard, one yeah. yesterday. Lizard. Yes. Um, they hop in Australia. They're marsupials. Oh, back a kangaroo. Yes. yes. Um, My little, little pony. Yeah. Uh, Donkey. Yes. Donkey. Yes. Yes. Um, um, this These is are the things on the bottom of the ships. They travel on the side of the mob. Remember, yeah. that was Ariel's punishment in the Little on a, Mermaid. On a farm. I know. Lot, I know. On a farm, a lot of times uh, they have red. A big red. Barn. Yes. Barnacles. Yes. Um, ooh. Ooh. Um, that guy Whoa. orange, they have orange and stripes. black stripes. Tiger? Yeah. Okay, long. and the long teeth. Oh, the, okay. the one oh. saber tooth tiger? Yes! yes. yes. Um, oh, this is the tiny one. Oh, Gus Gus. Gus Gus. Oh, mouse. Yes. yes. Um, oh, this is the oil that I got from his safety. Oh, emu. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, my dog. Duck. Yes. Great job, Lindsay family. Yes, y'all did fantastic. Good guessing, Emma Kate. So now, in our other winner, they took this heads up game to a little extra challenge and decided to do it charade style. Yes, it is. It's hard. Wolf. 
Pig. Anteater. Hog. <laughs> Giraffe. Alligator. Pass. Horse. Pony. Seahorse. Yes. Flamingo. Crane. Snake. Alligator. Gator. Crocodile. Yes. Good job, Wolf Family. Yes, we love some charades. Heads up. Guys, if y'all are missing any of our games, make sure you check out our Instagram at the Lane Students so that you can be participating in all the games and activities that we do during this time because, again, we want you to stay busy and doing something while you are safer at home. And so make sure you're participating in all those things with us. So check those out if you're not already. And who knows, like, Maybe you'll win a prize from one of our games. You don't for this week, but you might in another week. Who knows? We'll see. So definitely participate in those. Well, right now we're going to jump over and we're going to do an interview with Andy John. And Josh is going to ask him some questions that some of y'all have submitted to us so we can get to know our new pastor together. So y'all check this out. All right, Lindsay Lane, the students, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We're so glad to have you here with us tonight. We're going back and doing our late night lane service. Uh, we've got a very special guest with us tonight. We've got our main campus pastor, Andy John King, with us. And so you guys gave me some questions to ask him. And so uh, we'll get started with those here in just a second. But Andy John, so you're our new senior pastor, main campus pastor. I don't know the correct title. What title do you prefer? I think we're going with lead pastor. All right, lead That's pastor. It. I didn't have any of those written down. <laughs> but the lead pastor here at the main campus at Lindsay Lane. Uh, and you got the, the special uh, privilege of kicking off your pastorhood here uh, during a worldwide pandemic. Right. So <laughs> how's that going? Yeah, it's been a little bit of a challenge. Uh, no, honestly, there, I bet I've told several people that there's nothing in seminary that prepares you <laughs> for leading That's, during a pandemic but oh it's yeah. kind of encouraging because all the other seasoned pastors I've talked to have not been through anything like this at all but uh but that said uh I, I thought this morning when when you're in a position like this you're in a really good position to trust God mm -hmm. and uh that's when he can he can take the lead and uh, you can give him credit for it on the other side so God's really been faithful to, to work in all of us and through us for his glory. And uh, so, there's, it's, yes, it's been challenging. <laughs> I've been lying if I said oh, yeah. it has not been challenging. It's definitely been challenging, but, but God's faithful for sure. Yeah, it's, it's definitely different, and I, I totally agree with you about the seminary thing. I was telling somebody the other day, uh, like, there's no class on, well, here's how you handle pandemics. Right. Uh, or how you do online church for, yeah. you know, I think you can prepare for a week, but like when we're doing this for months, it's it's interesting. Yeah. The, la the so the, one of the things I remember being kind of a time of crisis was tornadoes came through this area, mm -hmm. and you know things are being uh, people's houses are being knocked down, and the church is going out, and it was different for a for a short time, for right. like a week yeah. or a week and a half, two weeks, and you're trying to help people specifically, but. It's, this is so much different than yeah. that because it's prolonged and it's widespread and uh, man, it's it's just very very different. Uh, again, I don't I don't even think the people that write the books on or articles on how to lead during crisis, oh, yeah. they probably don't. Yeah, don't think about this being the example they use. No, I don't think any of us were prepared for it to be like this no, long. No. Uh, all right, so tell us a little bit. I know some people know you, but. Some people don't. So tell us a little bit about your family, like how'd you meet your wife and your kids? And So Brittany and I will be married 13 years in June, and uh, we have two kids, Davis. He's just turned 10 on Sunday, and uh, Noel uh, turned 7 in March. So uh, we have two kids, and Brittany and I actually met on a blind date. Uh, I, was, I was coaching at Tanner, and, um, and we were introduced by Brother Dusty's daughter, Joe Dare, 
Okay. And and then her husband Heath. Heath and I played baseball together growing up a little bit. And so uh, we, we hung out with them some, and they, they said, hey, there's this girl from Birmingham. Well, not this girl. It was Junior's cousin. So she said, hey, you should meet my cousin from Birmingham. I'm like, okay. So uh, I was, I was, we were coaching basketball one night in a Thanksgiving tournament, and we all went out to eat at Chili's uh, after that, and uh, the, the rest kind of went from there. So, uh, yeah, so that, Brittany, Brittany is Brother Dusty's niece. Okay. Which is, I always joke and tell people that's how I got the job or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, so that's how we met, and uh, okay. we've been married for almost 13 years. Awesome. I think we're coming up on 14 years, so, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it seems like a long time until you meet people that have been married like 40-something years. Oh, yeah. Longer than you've been alive. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's good. It's been good. Yeah, years. I think my grandparents are coming up on 72 Wow. It's either 72 or 73. I'm not sure which one, so don't hold me to that. That's that. awesome. That's a uh, long time. Yes, it is. Mm. Uh, well, all right, so what do you and your family like to do for fun? For fun, uh, this is so cheesy. Like, my wife would not want me to. So, like, our, our weekly routine in, involves us uh, trying to just be together at home, which is going to look like us in front of a Hallmark movie, which is cheesy, <laughs> and I know that. But it's kind of like a heartwarming moment, you know, during oh, yeah. the week. But other than that, man, we're we're just like everybody else. We play ball. Uh, we we like to be together. We like to be together with our extended family. Yeah. And hang out on the holidays, but also we like to hang out with our friends too. And so, we do the normal stuff. Right now, we're not doing normal stuff. I almost died on a rip stick <laughs> the other day. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Where we I hope we do get back to playing some regular sports because. Oh, yeah. This other stuff I'm not good at. I wasn't good at that either, but still, it's uh Is there a video of the ripstick? There is a video of the ripstick. You guys can show it if you want. I know that when Greg and Daniel get a hold of it, they've already put it. <laughs> okay. so you're, you're welcome to feature to, it. It is what it is. I'm going to have to work that in. I'm going to have to go see a doctor soon. Cause, like, I will it, say it, it, I, I sympathize with you because I decided the other day I would take off on the girl's scooter. And I had only made it to the end of the driveway, and I didn't know about the transition of the end of the driveway. And they yes. didn't tell me until I hit that transition. Uh, so yeah, that was also interesting exactly as well. Uh, between Thank that and the dog, I think the dog almost blew my knee out, but that's another story. Yes, uh, all right, so how has the transition in this been for your family? Like I know we, we just transitioned back to the state of Alabama. My kids have never lived here. Yeah. Different church, that kind of stuff. How's that been for y'all? So Brittany, Brittany was actually um, a, a preacher's kid too. Her mm -hmm. dad, Mr. Mike, was a pastor for a long time in Birmingham. And, uh, and, and so this was not new to her, but it's, it's still difficult. Anytime you leave one group of people and right. go to a different, it's, it's difficult because of the relationships. Um, but that's, we never doubted where God would lead us. Mm -hmm. uh, for our kids, it was, it was more difficult for our children yeah. because of the relationships. And we pray for that. We pray for our kids to make friends at Lindsay Lane East, which happened. And then, uh, and then so when they come over to the main campus, there's a difficult transition for them because of their age. Uh, but also because they're having to make friends again, yeah. and it's harder when you're little. And uh, so I really think, seriously, if, if, when we took the vote, I think if my son had a vote, he would have voted no. <laughs> but but it's, it's really, the, the staff yeah. here and the leaders have made us feel so welcome, yeah. made our kids feel mm -hmm. very welcome, which we're appreciative of. Yeah. And that helps a ton. And they, yes. they've made friends, and they've made people here. It's just, yeah. they're kids. Yeah. You know, so. I think my kids have finally, I don't know, it depends on which two you ask. But if you ask them, they would still identify themselves as Texans, even right. though they only lived in Texas two years, weren't born in Texas. Uh, but, I, you know, just that transition for them has been hard. But I, like you, I echo, like, everybody here has been just over-the-top welcoming and yeah. just really, it's really helped that transition. That's right. Well, change anyway is, is yeah. hard, can be painful and... So, uh, but we, we also need to be able to get used to change. Oh, yeah. And yeah. get through some things in life. And they're learning that, too, just like we are. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, it's not all serious. Yeah. Uh, we did ask some of our students. You guys uh, text me and let me know some questions that they had for you. So, we may try to do some of these kind of uh, rapid fire. But first, I mean, I know you know that you have some big shoes to fill. Yes. Uh, and our former pastor, uh, Dusty. And so... In regards to those things, what is your favorite little Johnny joke? Man, I, there's so many. Uh, I, don't rem, I don't This is awful. I don't know if I remember one specifically. Mm -hmm. I know why he tells them to illustrate a point uh, or, or to provide humor in a, in a message, which 
we all try to do that. I'm not funny. Like, I'm just not funny at all. So I remember telling a joke one time in this building to our students, and I thought it was funny, but it was like old guy humor. <laughs> and, I mean, it was crickets. It got no response. Yeah. So, and, but I, l- growing up, I used to listen to Jerry Clower all the time. Okay. And my granddad and I could, like, quote every single one of them. <laughs> And so, like, I think that stuff's funny, yeah. but that's like an older generation. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I don't even try to tell jokes. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. I can't remember okay. a specific one. That's a terrible answer. All right. Well, maybe you could do this one. What's your favorite Dusty-ism? <laughs> I hate to answer this. Uh, I, you know, one of my f- favorite words, and I mean, I mean, I may be wrong on it, but one of my favorite words that he says is, um, is applicable, it's, okay. which I believe is applicable. Yes. But he he's, he always leaves out the bees and he says applicable. Uh, but I always think that one's funny. But the names is what gets me. Okay. So so Brother Dusty and Brittany's dad, which we're brothers, are the same in that if they don't know your name, they'll take a shot at it rather, <laughs> rather than just saying hey man or hey buddy. Like they'll give it a shot. And, yeah. And when they're when they do that and it's not right, it's really funny. Okay. I, I think he brother Dusty used to call Greg Wise Gary Wise for <laughs> you know, that was awesome. Every time he called him that was was great. So that's some of my favorite things he does. All right. We had a guy on staff that his name was Jeremy, uh, but uh, our bus drivers called him Jeffrey and oh, like yeah. forever called him <laughs> Jeffrey that's and funny. wouldn't change. Every All right. Time. Also like Brother Dusty, do you like green beans? I love green beans. Okay. Yeah. I did not know he was had a strange aversion to green beans and does not like them at all. I didn't know that either. To, to Until recently. we tried to play that yeah. game and they just warned me, don't do green beans with Brother Dusty. I love green beans, white beans, pinto beans. Yeah, all, right. all of them. See, that's I'm glad to be back now. That's right. All right. Uh, here's some funny ones or silly ones, I guess. How do you define what is a sandwich and what is not a sandwich? Yeah, so I don't. I do not think a hot dog is a sandwich. I. I I don't think a hamburger is a sandwich. Because it's a hamburger. I'm thinking deli, okay. deli stuff. I'm with you. A sandwich. I, did not, I, I did not understand. I knew you would know the history of the hot dog question. Yeah. Like, I don't know anybody that ever considered a hot dog. I don't either. I, 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 know, that it's, I know that it's meat in a bun. I get right, it. yeah. I don't know. I just, I'm thinking deli meat and lettuce and, All right. and stuff like that. How do you like your steak? Medium. Medium. Okay. Medium rare. Probably uh, had a bad experience in Ecuador <laughs> with uh, with an undercooked steak that was bleeding when they served it to me. So uh, so now I'll go medium. Oh yeah. But uh, if I was in a foreign country, I'll go well done. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite cut of steak? Oh man, I don't know. We don't. I don't eat it enough. Uh, like ribeye, I guess. Is, okay. Yeah. I feel like during quarantine, Amanda and I were talking. I was like, I don't know. When's the last time we had? Yeah. Steak, like we just haven't done it. My, no, this is my mama used to make pork steak growing oh, up. Yeah. Like we never had steak on a grill. Yeah, and and she would always cook pork steak. And and like when I got older, I thought that was kind of like a normal thing. Yeah. And then everybody's like, y'all didn't eat real steak, ate pork steak. They're like, what's that? So it's good though. Sometimes good. that's even better than a real steak. That's right. with us. All right, so I think I know the answer to this question, but if you could watch only one show for the rest of your life, which one would it be uh, and why? I'm an Office fan. Okay. I like The Office, and I know you know not all of it's the best, and you have to kind of spit out some of the things, that, but, man, it's, it's the funniest <laughs> show. It is so funny, and, um, to the point of where we quote it often. Yeah. And what's funny is when we quote it in our staff meetings and some of the other folks are, don't understand our references, yeah. and that's awesome. But, uh, but you yeah. know. Probably, yeah, all the time. What's your favorite episode from The Office? I, I, think, my, I think my favorite is, um, I don't know the name of the, of the actual episode, but uh, when the company's being sold and, and, okay. uh, they're, and, and Michael's leading them to the murder mystery <laughs> and uh, you know, yep. they're having to solve it. Yes. Yeah, that's, that was, I that's, do declare. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Delta Burke, I do declare. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, think, that's my favorite one. I think our favorite episode is probably the one where Dwight does the fire, and then when Angela throws the cat in the ceiling and it yes. comes back down, and Oscar falls like that. That gets awesome. that gets me every time. The, the fire when 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 they are uh, learning CPR, yeah. CPR yeah. training. That's and yeah. they start singing uh, "Staying Alive." Yes, makes me laugh every time. Every time. that and the Dundies, like the Dundies. Yes. Yeah, it gets me every time. It's great. All right, does pineapple belong on pizza? I say no, just because I like pineapple. I just don't like it with with pizza. I'm 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 pretty 
I don't know, normal stuff. On okay. Pizza. Yeah. Do you eat like just pepperoni or can you do an everything yeah, pizza? Yeah, uh, pepperoni sausage supreme is, is good. Um, okay. My favorite, my favorite is probably Pizza Hut oh. or Tombstone. Oh. <laughs> Tombstone at home. Oh, you know, goodness. I'm not, we're not above pizza rolls either. So yeah, we, we I'm like, not a Pizza Hut person. Here, does Pizza Hut still have a buffet? Uh, yes, it does. Okay, because I know only one a of few. Them, one of them okay. does, right? Yeah. I know right. in Amanda's hometown, they have a buffet, and yeah, yeah. like ours went out in Muscle Shoals a long time ago. It may be back, I don't know, but went out a long time ago. But it's good. I just, I think student ministry has like burned me on pizza. Right. And so I can only do like oh, real good pizza, and I'm yeah. real picky about my pizza. So yeah, Papa John's, we we hung out at a friend's house of mine growing oh, up. Yeah. We ate so much Papa John's. I'm sorry, Papa John's. I got tired <laughs> of it. I'll eat it now, but man, I. Right. Off for a few years. All right. What was your first car like? I drove. <laughs> my first car was a '92 Jeep Cherokee Country. Okay. It was red. It's not a cool Jeep like you're thinking. Okay. It was more of the box top Jeep, and uh, and there was a couple things I remember about it. On one of the speakers didn't work in, until you hit like a, if you hit a pothole or a bump, it would come on, <laughs> yeah. and all we would all be like, "Hey, it's on!" And you'd have all four speakers. And then all right. The, on the on the back side of the Jeep, there was a, a you know the nozzle that sprays water, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. And well, it was turned the opposite way. And so <laughs> okay. we had a lot of fun with that during baseball season. We would have guys get the equipment out of the back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I had a let's see, it was a '93 Ford uh, Escort that was painted gold. Yeah. So it was my grandfather's car before that. So you gold. Know, yeah. <laughs> and had a gold glitter. My grandparents, bless their hearts, I love them to death. They got me. Uh, that car, and they put a gold glitter tag on the front with my name in curs cursive, yeah. and it looked like it said to Osh instead of Josh. Oh, so so the, my cousins and everybody else like gave me a really hard time about there it. You go. But then I put rims on it. So there, rims, you had <laughs> oh, rims. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, uh, what size That's, rims? Well, because it was a Ford Escort, only 13-inch rims would fit, but uh, they were chrome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> it was rims. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> There's pictures, but it's I it's, real, it's real I bad. I had speakers in the back. I never. Oh, yeah, that. I did the I did the whole sound system thing. There you go. Tinted my windows. Yes, I had two I had two uh, two tens in the back of my okay. Jeep and never hooked them up. Not one. <laughs> now I always tell right. people I had two tens and rock from Fosgate down. Yeah, but, but never never. I did. Up. Yeah, my mm, that's I think that car and that sound system my dad to this day still hates. Yeah, I, yeah, I I wouldn't go back and do that again. All right, we'll talk about music. What's your, who's your favorite musical artist? Oh, man. Because I thought about this, and this is a real hard question, because I've got, like, genres and yes. times of my life. Let's do a lot of different kinds of, yeah. of music. Uh, man, I, I don't know. Like, right now, I'm really into Mandolin Orange. That's, that's, I uh, don't know that. They're, they're, anyway, check them out. They're really good. But that's, that, they've been around for a while, apparently. Okay. Uh, but they're kind of an updated bluegrass kind of okay. sound. But then, man, we listened to a lot of R and B growing okay. up. Like, right. I get made fun of all the time. I went to a Boys to Men concert when I was hey, in college. Me too. That's my first concert. Really? I went to Gosh, my mom. Is... My mom took us to see. Uh, uh, it was Jodeci. Yes. Boys to Men, and the headlining group was MC Hammer at the Von Braun Civic Center. This is not something we should be bonding over. This is <laughs> awful, much. by the way. But, I, but we've but, seen, we've both seen Boys to Men in concert. Yeah. It's not good that we shared no. this one. On the this recording, <laughs> but I liked I liked a lot of R and B okay. uh, growing up. I like country music too. And I now my on the the face side of it, I was a huge Third Day fan. Okay, yeah. Uh, went in high school because they were just getting popular then. Yeah. But um, I don't know, man. I, I like a lot of music yeah. for sure. I like a lot just country. I just I don't know. I don't know if it was just growing up. Everybody thought that's what I should listen to, or yeah. that's what everybody. I don't know. I just. That's yeah. the assumption everybody has outside the state of Alabama about Alabama. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody thought I lived in the country. I'm like, it's the city. It's not anywhere. Yeah, that's true. All right, so you've transitioned from youth pastor to a campus pastor at East and now to the lead pastor here at Lindsay Lane. Like, yeah. what is one thing maybe you miss about student ministry? Uh, the, I think at every stop it's the people. You know, yeah. it's very cool to see people that used to be in our student ministry we get to hang out with or, or catch up with now. Um, I miss seeing some of the people that moved off. Um, mm -hmm. It's great to catch up with them. The other part is just it's really fun. Yeah. You know, I, I think the challenge becomes guys of, of, of our age generation is we have led student ministries where when the gathering gets together, we do a lot of fun stuff. And so Sunday mornings, 
towards an adult generation. We figure out how to do that, right? Uh, but we know now it's multi generational, right. so not all of the same things are going to connect. But um, I miss that. I miss being able to have the freedom to really do a lot of fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, in the services, but the people in, in that too. Yeah. What's one thing about student ministry that you don't miss? I've never been a messy games guy. Okay. Uh, even though I'll do it, and I've right. done that stuff. Uh, and and lock ins were <laughs> awful. Amen. I did not ever want to. I know you guys love lock ins. We did a forty uh, hour famine here. Alan and I did, and man, it was uh, it was no. We were all just hungry by the time of course the, the, the effect it was supposed yeah, yeah. to have it had but man yeah. it was the worst i looked at doing it one time and i was like that sounds great in theory but i just yeah it's a lock-in combined with no food and that's no yeah. it, was, it was tough <laughs> all right it was tough. in that same kind of thinking like what do you miss most about east same thing it's, it's definitely the the people yeah um, you know the the campus side of it when you're starting something new you're starting a new church there's a there's a really high energy towards outreach, and uh, that's something yeah. that's something that we still bring with us everywhere because yeah. we're just outreach driven. But um, like we we miss that that new part of it. But more than that, it's just there's a lot of great people, and we were involved yeah. in, in a lot of their stories. And so um, it's the same it's the same way here. And once you get to know people, the relationships you build, and that's what it's really all about. I mean, we miss that a lot. Yeah. All right, so what are you most excited about here at the main campus? It's probably the same thing. Yeah. We, we look forward to the, to the uh, stories we get to tell years and years later. Yeah. Um, but, but just reconnecting with a lot of people here that we right. love. You know, yeah. and that's, that's something we had at East is we had a lot of grounded, established relationships here with people that are some of our greatest friends. Yeah. And so we look forward to that. Uh, but we, we look forward to the future, too, just to see where God would take us uh, amongst all the campuses and, and what we're doing here now. All right, so I know you came, you and Brittany came, and y'all spoke to our students at D-Now and shared a little bit with them that Sunday morning. Uh, and since this is geared for our students, uh, as their new pastor, like, what would you like to tell them or share with them, or what's one thought maybe you have for them? You know, one, one thing, I don't know, this is probably serious and real preachy, but, um, you know, when the Scripture talks about leaders in the church, mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that it gives to leaders is that they've got to have their family in order and uh, that they're to be, re you know, responsible managers, leaders of their own home. Well, part of that is the responsibility of the kids in the house that are Christians. Amen. You know, if you're, yeah. if you're a student in the student ministry and you're a believer, don't hold up your parents from becoming Christian yeah. believers because you can't get it together. Um, and I think that's okay to preach that and teach that because we have a responsibility, even as we're being sanctified and maturing. Yeah. Uh, to, to be responsible within our own family. Um, and that's what I would say. But, but I would also say don't give up. You know, man, teenage years, yeah. college years, there are lots of highs and lows. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, God, God is faithful even when we're unfaithful. That's what the yeah. Scripture says. So don't toss in the towel. Just don't yeah. quit when things are hard or you're not as uh, spiritually mature as you think you should be. Just yeah. don't give up. Hang on because God is still faithful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I look back and I just think, you know, like, I came to know the Lord during my teenage years and, like, never did anything, like, super crazy, but, like, still just struggling with my faith, trying to figure out, like, what I'm supposed to do or, like, what my high school years are supposed to look like. And then looking yeah. back and I'm like, man, it was such a brief time and I was so stressed about it. And yeah. it's really not worth stressing over. That's you know, right. like, I mean, it's, it's, it, it is what it is, and I know for our, especially for our students now, like, we never went through a yeah. pandemic. Like like you said earlier, all of our stuff was kind of short-lived, a tornado blows through, yep. you recover, but like, you know, even now in this situation, I know things are crazy, and like, you know, a lot of things have just kind of been thrown out the window, but right. like you said, God's still faithful, yeah. uh, and let these moments teach you, yeah. you know? Because you're in a, you're in a great, not, not just being in a pandemic, but Growing up, I remember my, my parents would talk to us about you need to pray about everything, right? And and seek God about everything. Who you marry, uh, where you go to school, what yeah. you do with the rest of your life. Like you really are in a great place to learn to trust God. Yeah. Um, and then when you get to that place, you know where where we are with careers and and family, then you can look back to what He yeah. has done, so that when you look forward uh, to deal with things and to pass on to your own children yeah. about how you need to trust God because He'll come through. Yeah. And just yeah. keep telling of God's faithfulness. I That's mean, right. It's, so, 
Well, I appreciate you being on here. Thank yeah, you for taking time you. out of your day to be with us. I know y'all got a lot going on trying to figure out stuff. Um, be praying uh, for Pastor Andy John and for others. Tomorrow they'll be at staff planning retreat for our churches. So be praying for them through that. And we look forward to seeing you guys again here with us next week. Hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Have a great night. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed our game and our interview with Pastor Andy John King. I know I really enjoyed getting to know some new interesting and fun things about him, so I hope you enjoyed that as well. Guys, definitely check us out next Thursday night again at 6.30. We'll have some new uh, Stay in Your Lane games and a message that we'll be dropping then that you don't want to miss. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Also, seniors, our graduate recognition has been changed, but we are still going to recognize you. This time on Saturday, May the 16th, we will have a very special drive-in service at 5 p.m. to recognize you and your accomplishments and your time through our student ministry. You need to be here at 4 p.m. for this service. And if you are a senior and you're graduating this year or have already graduated, make sure you turn in your information by May the 3rd. You can turn in that information by emailing myself or if you're an Eastern or North student, you can email your youth pastor to make sure that you are recognized on that Saturday evening. And the rest of you, make sure you come out to this drive-in service so that you can show your love and support to all of our graduates on this special night May 16th at 5 p.m. See y'all next week.